Hey, it's your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. We are zooming in and we are focusing in on a common viewer inquiry that I receive and that is the really ultimately it's the experience of depersonalization. When someone tells me they don't know who they are, they don't know what they want, they don't know where to go, they don't know how to think for themselves, they don't know how to detach from this source which is the narcissist and really fuel their own life is as if they don't have their own really operating system or their own fuel or really they're not in touch with their own intuition, their source, their senses, their positive emotions. And that is because really I find that oftentimes the um, experience with a narcissist, one is very much objectified and you are judged or evaluated with how well you can take care of them and their needs and your identity your temperament is reflected or validated according to how well you satisfy them in their narcissistic needs. So if the narcissist needs you to be a certain kind of spouse, a certain kind of uh, husband, a certain kind of wife, a certain sort of sibling or daughter, they need you to uh, validate them in a specific way, chances are it is all about them towing the line and you really kind of falling in suit or falling behind almost as if they're the leader and you are the follower and you are not really permitted then to think according to your own boundaries, your own judgment, your own evaluation of what's in your best interest or if you do that's gaslighted, brainwashed or muddled and you really become detached or depersonalized from that connection or that true north star, star that true north star, that kind of inner guiding compass that function of the human being to know and how to say no, uh, to you know know with certainty what is going to be in your best interest and, and how to de be declarative and say no and draw a boundary and say, you know what, I, I don't want to do that to myself. I don't want to disrespect myself. I don't want to cross that boundary or that line. And oftentimes in narcissistic abuse, there is a boundary violation. There is a giving up of your own identity and temperament in order to satisfy the needs of the narcissist in order to be on the lookout and you know hearing you know are they going to launch out into a rage am I going to have to defend myself so then what we call the walking on eggshells so your life direction becomes trying to prevent their outbursts you know because you know it's so painful to be on the receiving end of narcissistic rage or to feel not loved by this person who you have idealized that you would do anything to prevent being detached from them. So they become your life. Your life becomes built around them. They become your guiding, you know, your, they become your North Star. They become really what your compass is set to, to guide yourself to. And um, this can be very depersonalizing. In other words, you basically hollow yourself out and fill yourself with an identity that is meant to people please or to be there for this person or please this person. And it can go all the way from how you dress, what you eat, how your lifestyle is, the career that you pursue, you know, every, everything um, can be, uh, you know, oftentimes, especially for the younger generation, I find those people you know, go along with their music or go along with the drugs or go along with the drinking or, you know, go along with those sorts of um, choices that these narcissists have made and they're really not making the choices for themselves in their best interest, but it's like they're they're basically, you know, doing that by default. They, they're not standing up for themselves. They're not having a, a strong backbone. They're not able to have the inner security or testing of reality to say, no, you know what, I'm not going there. I'm not allowing myself to stay with a, uh, a spouse who cheats. I'm not allowing myself to stay with a spouse who lies pathologically. I don't allow myself to be berated and to be shamed and be talked to like that. Um, you know, a lot of people just normalize it and they become so desensitized and then furthermore depersonalized, which basically you feel a detached from your own body, your own thoughts, your own emotions. Um, you kind of just observe yourself like, and you stop really caring. You know, some people say, well, they let themselves go, you know, um, and that's kind of what occurs. Um, and you really sort of feel like, and then begin to believe that your feelings, emotions, values, and behaviors lack in significance, that they're not important, that, you know, they're not very valuable, that 
this other person and their needs and what they think is more important because the narcissist wants to present with that um, heightened sense of self-importance and coupled with a lack of empathy, you know, creates that whole, I mean, those two, those two, you know, basic qualities of a narcissist is what's going to create a lot of the issues um, that we see the pathological lying, the grandiosity, uh, the exploitation of others, the detachment from what you really care, you know, that inflated charm, uh, facade, things of this nature all st are stemming really from a lack of a, a lack of security within that person, believe it or not. Um, people who have followed the narcissist, oftentimes these people are very insecure. They're not very grounded. They're not very rooted in reality. They they have a, a blown out, you know, charm, which is really all an act. Um, I always liken it to, if you've ever sh seen the show Seinfeld, and I know we have a lot of international viewers here, but there's, um, I mean, I love the, all the characters in Seinfeld, but Kramer, you know, he's really funny. He's got like kind of like curly hair and like he always has this like entrance, you know, where, you know, he like slides in the door and that's kind of, just kind of how he is. But that's just, you know, that's kind of like how the narcissist is. They, they just, you know, they show up and then you just feel like you have to pay all this attention to them. And then you kind of, you know, lose yourself or you, you know, then are just trying to keep their life going for them versus trying to keep your life going for yourself. And it becomes a really profound, what they call codependency um, situation. And so, um, you know, I would encourage you then to detach then from this narcissist who's causing this feeling of lack of significance or lack of importance with you, your feelings, your emotions, your, your perspective, you know, things like that, which are so important for you to continue to live in, and for your health, because really your emotions, um, you know, really connect to all of your cells. And that really sets forth all the neuropeptides in the DNA. And it gives basically your, all your cells, you know, their marching orders, whether to be healthy and strong or whether to be weak and sick and, lead, and be prone to disease and open and vulnerable to disease. So, you know, uh, people who are older, you know, disease, you know, people will know, they will understand unequivocally the, uh, the correlation and connection between your emotions, stress, and disease. And a lot of people think, oh, it's just genetic, you know, it's just physically based, and it's just, you know, it just, ah, uh, you know, well, however I live, or however I sleep, or whatever I think doesn't have anything to do with my arthritis, or my gout, or my chronic, you know, obstructive bulge, uh, whatever the, uh, you know, all the, um, the colitis and the irritable bowel syndrome and things like that. Oftentimes people don't realize that a lot of these degenerative diseases have are fueled by stress and a negative emotion. And, you know, I know a lot of people don't always talk about this. Um, I know that there's integrative medicine that's coming out, you know, as, as kind of a, a new concept. Um, and you have an interdisciplinary team to help you. Um, and I definitely recommend that. Um, you know, and also to look at, you know, the work of uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza and things of that nature. So um, it's it's very in intensive stuff. And um, I would just encourage you to overcome the feelings of depersonalization, detach from the disease source, which means detach from the person who is devaluing you and reflecting back to you that you're wrong, insignificant, that you're stupid, that you're dumb, that you're, you know, you're crazy, you know, all the negative messages that they're trying to feed you to make themselves feel better, which have, you know, it has nothing to do with reality, but oftentimes people feel so attached to this person, they can't let them go. They would rather suffer the injustices rather than do the work of being independent, autonomous, and, you know, connected with that source and having happier emotions and living free and liberated. So, um, you know, depersonalization is coming, you know, coming back out of that is realizing that you are a human being. You're not a human object. You're not a human doing. You're a human being with real thoughts, emotions that are yearning for expression. And it's important to uncover those. And um, as we discussed in the recovery journal, it's you can uncover those um, by asking yourself the right questions. If I wasn't so hurt by this individual, what would I really love to do? If I weren't so hindered by the self-limiting beliefs that have been told to me by this individual, what, what would I really like to feel? Where would I like to go? You know, all these open-ended questions that we've discussed in the previous videos, 
You need to ask yourself these questions so you can begin to fill in the answers for yourself and begin to get, you know, into the real you who has been muddled and who's been basically pushed down and repressed down to make you feel like you are a nobody, which is not true. You know, you need to uncover that and ask, begin to ask yourself these questions, begin to dive into um, that self-exploration, that, that journey within. And I know that this is a lot of deep stuff and it does take a lot of, pro um, you know, um, it does take a lot of work, but otherwise, if you don't do the work, you're just maintaining the hurt. You're just allowing the hurt to continue in the depersonalization and objectification to continue. And you're not speaking your truth. You're not speaking how you truly feel. You're not speaking from where you feel you deserve to live, how you deserve to be treated, what you deserve to uh, be told and and not you know and accepted uh, and and not have to be forced to do certain things in order to belong. Um, it's very very important for you to ask yourself this to become repersonalized, um, to begin to feel like you're in your own skin again, like you can relax again, like you can take care of yourself, um, like so you can you know fuel your your needs. You can pay the light bill. You can pay where you need to go independently and have and learn those skills. So if you know, I know a lot of people also tell me that, you know, I, I would have to live in my car, or I'd have to do these things. Well, then that tells me that you need to pick up some skills, you need to, you know, um, learn, you know, learn some things, um, you know, learn some basic um, office skills, learn some basic computer skills, learn some basic teaching skills, you know, do some things that will take you into some coursework according to where you want to develop yourself and determine those. And then you say, I don't know who I am. Well, then ask yourself if I could be anything that I wanted to be and money wasn't an issue, I would really love to, and then list 10 or 20 different things. I mean, you're going to come up with some answers. You know, if money weren't an issue, if time weren't an issue, if these people weren't an issue, what would I really like to become? What would I really love to do? What, where would I really love to go? Who would I love to meet? You know, these are different questions that you can ask yourself that will help uncover the answers that you've been looking for. It's peace and harmony with you here today. I hope these videos do help. Please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.